So I'm going to look at just a, a very high level view of how the ignition uh, system or the igniter system works. So we have um, an inductor and current comes in from the battery and goes through the conduct inductor and then through the switch and back. Okay, and when it does that, uh, the there's a build up of voltage across the inductor. So the voltage across the inductor is equal to L times the IDT. And we'll we'll get to a stage where we have some uh, steady flow almost, and we will get a, a magnetic field around the inductor. So here are the flux lines around the inductor. Now they're not varying, so they're, they're constant. When, when this is steady, they're not varying their constant flux lines. Then what happens is the switch here opens. And when the switch opens, the current collapses. So the current now wants to go to the capacitor. Okay. And th this will, will, will charge up and the current will, will go to zero. So, you know, we had a high current originally going through the, in the inductor, and now that current is going to go towards zero as it goes into the capacitor and charges up the capacitor. So we're going to get a DIDT. Okay. Now, this switch is only going to open up, f you know, for a very small time. So this capacitor will have to charge in that very small time. So the the DIDT is going to be very large, okay? So if we get a large DIDT, that means we get a large voltage. Okay? So there's going to be a large voltage across the uh, the inductor here, and because the current has changed so quickly, like the flux lines collapse very quickly, that means we have flux lines cutting um, an, an inductor over here. So that induces a, a voltage over here. And because there's many more turns in the, the coil over here than this side, the voltage gets stepped up. So first of all, we get a large voltage because of this large change in current with time. And then we multiply that by the difference in um, ratio of number of turns in the coil. So we get a very large voltage here thousands of volts. In fact, we can get up to maybe 20,000 volts on, on, on this side from you know, um, a 24 volt DC system here. That goes through a, a bridge rectifier, so we get the polarity right, so we get that big voltage here then, and that goes to the uh, igniter. Okay, so we have a large voltage here to the igniter. So with this large voltage coming to this point here, and we get this large potential drop between the center of the igniter and the case, and the case, this part here. And what's going to happen is you, the voltage wants to jump across that. The electrons will jump across that, and as it jumps across, we get this arc. Okay, and that's that's our igniter. And if uh, we want that to to be continuous, well, well, what we do is we replace this switch here with um, a tr transistor of some sort, and we just feed pulses to it. So as this pass, sorry, as the switch switches on. Um, current will go this way and when the switch switches off then the current will go this direction so you can you can control the the voltage on this side by varying uh, this time here okay yeah you know, maybe I should say the ratio varying the ratio in which this switch is on to to the time in which it's off um, 
yeah, so that's 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 the basic uh, principle of of an ignition system. Now, whether this is for a car or or for a gas turbine, you know, the the basic principle is the same. So in a car, you know, this this used to be the points, and in fact, in a piston engine aircraft, uh, they still use points in in the magneto. But in cars, they replace that with the transistor, and this is called electronic ignition. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's how we get this very large voltage on the on the igniters. The resistor here is a, a discharge resistor. So when we when we have ignited the engine and um, you know we, we switch off, you know let's let's just say there's a, a switch here. You know, and this switch is opened up, and we don't have we don't have the circuit working anymore. There is a possibility that there could be some um, voltage still within the within the capacitor, and because of the high voltages, you know, it's thousand volts. It's it's very dangerous. So we put a resistor in here um, to discharge the the capacitor. So the capacitor will will discharge through this resistor, and the length of time. That takes to to discharge will be dependent upon the value of the capacitor and the value of the resistor. So this is R. So it is good practice if you're going to work with igniter uh, igniter plugs that uh, you wait for an amount of time uh, before you start working with them because that is to allow the capacitor to discharge through this resistor and that could be anywhere between five and ten minutes um, so I think the recommended time is is ten minutes and then when you uh, take the igniter out it's a good uh, practice to earth the tip of it here so just tip, tip that off the uh, off the engine somewhere and that just ensures anything uh, residual charge that might be there just goes 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 to ground. All right, so that's an overview of the uh, igniter system.